Welcome back. Uh, in this video, we want to add to this uh, previous project, we want to add the cut functionality. So, in our previous video, we did this uh, project where we fetched all these products from an API. And if you have not watched this video where we did this, uh, this uh, fetching of these products from an API, and we even added a view single detail page. Um, so if you have not watched this video, there are actually two. One is where we fetched all these products from an API. All these ones. And this video is this one. So if you have not watched, simply go to my channel and find this video. Fetching and displaying API data with async await for each and uh, insert adjacent HTML. So if you have not watched this one, just go back and watch this before you continue with this project. Now, um, I'm just going to put this video link in the description. And then the second one was actually where we added this functionality of view detail, where you click on the view detail button and then you see the detail button, the detail, um, the detail, uh, the detailed view of this product. Okay, so we also did that in this video. So in this video, you also just go here, fetching and displaying a single product from an API. So this product, um, this video, I will also leave the link in the description. So after you have watched those two videos, you can now come and then we continue with our project. So in today's project, what you want to do is adding the add to cart functionality to this project whereby you can click uh, add to cut and then add this one in the cut and then we are going to make that cut persistent even when you log out or even when you refresh the page it should be persistent so the first thing i'm just going to do to this page i'm just going to add this link that takes to the cut page so this is um our project if you remember very well uh, we had this one I'm just going to go through uh, this project uh, very fast. But the first thing I'm just putting on top here, I'm adding uh, a link taking to the cart page. Okay. And then on this link, I have a class cart link. And then I've added here cart items. And then in the brackets, I've added a span that is going to hold our cart count or the items that are going to be in the cart. And I've added, given it an ID card count. Okay, so when I view now, it adds uh, nicely this uh, cut items with zero items. Now, this cut link here is in my CSS, so you can copy this class, go to CSS, and they say Control F, find this class. So the cut link is just here, and what it's simply doing is positioning it absolute and is putting top and right 10 pixels. That's why it is in the corner like that. And then we gave all the other things, background color, padding, and these things. That's why we have this uh, cut link like so. Okay, so another thing we're going to do uh, is adding the cut button. But before we add the cut button, if you click here, you can just see we have actually some uh, design in the cut. So I added this page. Now let me just take you through that page. It's not uh, just... A big thing so in the cut.html this is a new file i've created cut.html so create that page cut.html and then you can link to our css on top here in the cut.html then scroll down here and then in the cut i have created uh, let me take you through so i have created this div so the first div i created is this cut page okay so if you check for the cut page uh, here, let me show you what is in the cut page. So if you just check here the cut page, it has a background color, midnight, and it has also display flex. There is nothing much, flex duration column, and a gap of one. Okay, so that is the cut page. The Inside the cut page, I have two divs. Okay, I have the header, uh, the... Let me just go back. Uh, I have the header inside here, and then I have also the cut. So the cut header, if you look at it, it is this uh, that is holding this shopping cart, and then it's holding also this uh, go back to go back shopping. 
so if this under this swapping cut if you check it it is an h2 okay and then it is also having this cut count id that is going to be used to update our cut count or the items in the card so if you just go uh, go down here then if you just close this header so if you just go in css you can find this class cut header and you see the styles that i applied and by the way i'm just going to link um so just go to css and you're going to see the cut header is here and the only most important thing is just like a display flex and just five content space between and has this background color of white and the padding applied to it so you can see that's why they are side by side uh, next is the cut items so in the cut items uh, inside of the cut i have cut items so the cut items is not just containing this cut item so it has two cut items which are the actually exactly the same so in the cut item there is nothing we are doing uh, the cut items if you just go to css and you check out this class so if you check out this class uh, cut items is simply so having this prefix and the flexion column and with a gap of one that's why this is having this space now if you check the cut itself the cut item itself so the cut item is having actually like two things it's just having the left side which is having the image and the name so if you check in the left there is the image and the product name okay just like that and then it has also the button is going to be used to delete the uh, cut item and then on the right is also having the price okay so just like having this simple uh, ui um, and by the way the code we are going to be doing or i'm just going to leave the link to the github code in just in the description so you can just find and see uh, this code and see what you have done okay so after having all this ui set now it's time uh, we add the add to cut button to the ui so if you just go back to the if you just go back to these um, items on the uh, on the home page they are not having add to cut button so just going to add a add to cut button so it simply go to uh, go to the javascript remember we had loaded these products from a template and the template is here okay so i'm just going to simply go down under the details i'm just going to add one thing i'm just going to add a button so simply write a uh, button just like that and i'm just going to give this button a class so the class is going to be i'm just going to add a class and i'm just going to, going to be add to cut okay so this add to cut i'm just going to say here also add to cut okay so this class i've added here if we now go to the ui you can see now it has added a new button add to cut and it has some styles so let me just take you and see this add to cut so this add to cut ctrl c just get this class and just go here in css and add to cut button is here it has a padding background color black color white font size and all these things to make the button look nice so this is not uh, a big thing i guess at this point so uh we have the button looking like this okay so this is a nice thing and that is a good start so this is just marks the starting point where we can add now start adding some javascript which makes sense so now the idea of the add to cut is going to be like uh we get the cut items and when we, someone clicks on add to cut first of all we should get a notification that the item has been added to cut that is the one thing the second one is that the i the this uh item is going to be added to cut and we should see the number here changing to one uh another thing is that these items if someone refreshes the page the items the cut items they should not disappear and for that purpose we are going to use local storage to be like our database and then when we go to cut items now it should go to our cut items and then display them on the ui and then lastly we are going to have a delete when someone clicks on the delete then it should also delete it from the ui okay so now uh, let me go back to the home page 
So they just start, um, uh, first of all, they just start with JavaScript, okay? So the first thing is that, um, let me just go to the app.js, okay? So the first thing is, want to add um, an event listener to this button, okay? So want to add an event listener to this button, so that if someone clicks it, uh, we can actually know that it has been clicked. And you can see that the, the button is not just one, it's just on all items, okay? So the first thing is that we are going to select all these items that is on the UI, then we look through them, and then we give each individual button an event listener. So what you are going to do is, in our app.js, on top here, we can now select all the buttons. So I'm just going to come here, okay? So I'm just going to say select or cut, uh, buttons okay so we just going to say const add add to cut btns so these are like uh, buttons there are many so just going to say here uh, is going to be a document dot query selector or now we are using query selector or because uh, we are selecting all the buttons and they are not only just one we are selecting many buttons and we are selecting them using this class add to cut button because they're having this uh, this class okay so you can just go ahead and do this okay and this is supposed to be in quotes like so now um, if we just try to console log uh, these buttons Okay, something weird is going to happen. So let me just console.log buttons and let me just go to um, Let me just simply go to uh, Console here and you can see they are saying node list is zero. There is no any item that we are selecting and This is just because these items are done by async if you remember very well we are fetching all these products. All these products, we are fetching them from an API. So by the time you actually start checking this code here, is going to run before this function runs. And that means that the items, by the time we console.log these items, actually these ones are not yet there. Okay? So there are two things we would do. We would first wait for await this one to be done. And then after that, then we can check for this. Uh, alternatively, we can actually just copy this and we take inside this function, which is fetching the products and displaying them on the UI. So under this item, we have here uh, very many steps whereby we started displaying the spinner, we fetch data from the API, we got the data from here, and then that data, we sent it to the display UI which is responsible for displaying the data. And now, um, we can just first actually remove all this um, before we actually go ahead of ourselves. I'm just going to move this and we do it from scratch. Okay, so now, uh, inside here, after displaying the UI, we can add our add to cart functionality here. Okay, so I'm just going to see add to cut functionality. So add to cut functionality, we are going to actually do it uh, from here. Okay, so the first part is we are selecting these all items, select all cut buttons from the UI. So right now it is going to work simply because the items, by the time you are selecting them here, the buttons, they have been displayed on the UI on top here. So here the items, they will be displayed on the UI, and after this one has happened, then we can go ahead and do this. Okay, so now let me just go back. And right now, if you check on the cut, we have 20 items, uh, 20 buttons, representing 20 items, and that is great. Okay, that is one thing. So now the second thing, after you have selected all the buttons, we want to go through all the buttons, and we have access to one individual button. So I'm just going to see here. Uh, so you are going to look uh, through the through these buttons, okay? So I'm just going to see 
um, down here I'm just going to say um, add to cut buttons so we have all these buttons and then we are going to run a for each and with for each we are going to have access to a one individual one we are going to have access to one individual button okay and now I can go ahead and I console log a button so I can just access uh, now this individual button so now if I do that you'll just see that it is going to print out all these buttons actually 20 of them that means I'm just going through each individual uh, button uh, alone okay so now one thing we can just do now on these buttons is that we can add an event listener okay so I'm just going to say btn dot add event listener and now on this event listener is going to be click okay and on this click we can also actually access the event so I'm just going to have here uh, a function which has access to the event and then um, just like so and this is um, a callback function or it is this function that is going to run when we click this button okay so we can you just also say console.log and we can just say button click so adding an event listener if you have been uh, following my videos it shouldn't be a problem up to this point we just know very well if you add uh, an event listener to a button you just takes in two things it takes in the uh, event that is going to be uh, that is going to be listened to which is a click and when this event runs then it's going to execute this function so right now when we click it should just click uh, console.log button clicked so now let me just go back uh, it fetches all the items and down here i'm just going to click on this item okay so you can see button has been clicked I can scroll on the second item and I also click it and you can see two times button click. So that means our button is actually working perfectly. So after this, the next thing you're going to do is we want to understand actually which button has been clicked. Not just like only just like this button, but which product are we clicking on? Okay? So like um uh, let me first uh, make it in this uh, in this UI. Okay, that, that is great. So now, uh, each individual item, as you can see, if you remember when we were working on the view detail, we could be able to access uh, the, the product uh, ID of this item. So even here, we want actually to understand which item are we clicking on. Because if you click on this item one, you can see like when I view on view details it has product id one this one has a uh, product id two so i want to know which item has been actually clicked okay so to understand that then we have to attach an id on this button then the question becomes how do we attach an id to this button so going back to our template i'm just going to scroll down here to the display ui function where we have access to our uh, product so here we have this button here now what we want to attach is attaching a, an id to this button now when it, it was a link when it is a link you can attach the uh, the id by using this query string so you just put this question mark and then after that question mark you can add anything like this you can add question mark id and then when you go to the other side you can actually extract it but on the button is going to be somehow different and on the button we are going to use uh, data attributes okay or data sets so to use a data set you just simply come to the button and you're just going to give it a data and then you put dash then you can put any key you want so for instance we are giving it a data id and now data id is equal to now here is where actually where we attach our product id so I'm just going to come here and copy this product.id because our ID lives in this product.id. So here and now at this point, we are able to attach this 
ID, we are attaching it a particular button or an individual button. Now, um, after we have attached it, then how do we access it when we go to add it to cart this side when we click on the button? Now, when you click on the button, because there are very many buttons and they are all on the UI, okay, there are very many things. So, what we want to do is we can actually access this individual button or a particular button and we can access it using the event, okay? That's why uh, here in this function, I passed the event. Now, if you want to access the actual button that has been clicked here, you can actually use the event. Now, when I print out the event, to those ones who have, which is, if it's your first time to see the event, if I print out the event, an event is an object containing a lot of things, okay? It's an object containing a lot of things. I'm just going to click on any button, and you set the event is a very big object and in this object it has all these things it has the dimensions uh, from the top it has all these things uh, here but the most important one that we need is this one called target okay so the target is actually the one that is holding the actual button if you just look here you get so now here i'm just going to say event dot target event dot target now, if I print out event the target on the console, I just click any button like this one. Now, you see that if I click, actually, it has printed out the actual button, this one here. And you can see it has a data ID of 2. So that means we're using that event the target, which is the actual ID on a particular item. We can actually be able to access this data ID, this data set. Because the most important thing we want to understand is this id so to get this id from a data set yeah here this one by the way they normally call this one a data set and the key to this data set is called id this dash id okay so now at access that data set simply come to event the target which is the actual button and then on this one just simply say dot data set so you're trying to access the data set that has been attached and the key to this data set is the ID. Okay, so you can see here, event the target is the button. Data set is the key we are trying to access on the button, which is holding all data types that are being uh, sent with the button. And then the key is the ID. And this key, you extract it on this dash. So if it was data name, if this one was data name like this, then we would come here and we would put name. Instead of the ID, we would put here name. It would still give us what we want. Okay? Just yes, send this one to back, back to the ID. So go back even here. Uh, here. And name this one to be data ID. Okay, so now when I print out. So let me just go back, scroll down. I click on add to cart. You can see now I'm printing out two. If I click on this one, it prints out one. And if I just go ahead and click on this one, it prints out four. Okay. So that one is getting us the ID. Okay. So the one thing we can do is we can actually save this ID. So I'm just going to get this, uh, cut it. And then I'll just say const product ID, product ID, so that we can actually have it in the future. So I'm just going to say product ID is this one. Now I can still console.log uh, product ID now. Okay, this is the same thing. Or at this time I've saved it in a variable. So if I print, if I click on any button, let me scroll down like to this one. You can see it has eight. If I click on this one, it has seven. Okay, so now we have access to this uh, product ID. So what do we want to use the product ID? So one thing you should remember, we still have access to all these products. Okay, we have all these products. Now what we want is, we have a product ID. Now the only thing what we want to do is, we want to go through all these products we have here. And we ha we find an item, or we find a product, whose ID is this one. It's like now, I want to give you a scenario, for instance, in a school. 
you can be having a school and you have very many students and these students you have them you have given them maybe student numbers so someone can spot and say i've seen a student uh number 10 escaping from school so the only thing he has uh on this student is only a number the way we have only the id of the product we don't actually have the actual product but we actually have the id of that product so when you want to find this student you just simply come back and check all the students and see which student has that uh, number that you have seen so even here we are going to do the same scenario we are going to go through all these products and find a product whose id is the one we have clicked on i don't know if that uh, is clearly explained but let's go with that so the only thing we want is we want to find from all the products we want to find a product whose id is this product id we have clicked on okay so to find that product we still have access to all our products which is stored in this data you remember so this data was actually the actual products that came from the api so i'm just going to simply come here and i say console.log data so that you can see that we have actually accessed all the data so if i click on the button you see we have all these 20 items so what we want to do is go through all these items find a product whose ID, uh, product id is the same as the one we are having okay so now i'm just going to go here and i say const product so what we want to get is a product okay and this product is going to be equal to data okay so on this data these are the other products dot find so want to find and when this uh, find it has access to a product and then from this product we can find a product okay dot id is equal to our product id so we are trying to find a product remember when we say data dot find now this is an array method now this array method help us to access a product and then on it we can give a condition of a product we want to get for instance we want to get a product id we want to get a product whose product id is equal to our product id we are clicking on this one okay now i'm just going to console.log here product okay so when we do this now uh if i go to um to the items so let me just click on this item with product two so click there and they are saying undefined okay so let's just go back here and first see what we have done our uh, const product is data dot find and then we are finding a product uh give back or we are returning product uh dot id is equal to product id okay that one um is weird okay we should just be able to find that <clears throat> okay um okay okay so can we just first console the product okay okay so clearly we have the product okay uh, when we click on it we have the uh, the product but then uh, okay so i'm just putting this one outside uh, remove this one so what we want is this I want to find a product so we have product and then on it we have id is equal to product id i don't know why we can't get out our product guys uh, just a minute uh, sorry Control c uh, product okay so product is data dot find uh, 
I just try once again and we just see if there's any problem. It is still giving us undefined and the problem might be on this um, uh, we have the ID so let's first confirm we have everything we need console.log uh, product ID in fact inside here let's just print two things so inside here let's just uh, console.log okay let's first console.log uh, product.id and then also uh, console.log id just like so okay so i'm consoling these two things uh, the product.id so just click on this Okay, so you can see this one clearly is um, uh, Okay, so we have the one uh, of course here But then you can see that uh, on this one Okay, you can see on this one the ID is 2 and then this one is a string Okay, so one we are having here this one is a string but then i did not expect it to what we can just do is we can add a plus here to make it uh to make it uh also uh to make it also an integer but i did not think it would cause any threat because so you can see we have now all of them uh looking like they are integers so let's just go back and then we do a uh, product so we have product dot id is equal to product uh, id so this one should give us what we want okay and by the way you can also be seeing how i'm doing the troubleshooting and up now we are having is it the the find method am i writing it uh but let me just rewrite it so const uh product okay is equal to uh data so on data we can just write a find method okay so find and you could just have uh, access when you have the find method you have access to the product okay and then we can simply return product dot id is equal to product id i don't see any problem from uh from this uh, from this uh, I'm wondering why okay finally we have it okay so uh, it's just supposed to be just like that I don't know what has happened uh, let me just even remove this three this three they don't mean anything I think it is just because I'd put this the brackets I guess okay so even up now where there are two it should give us and by the way even if you remove this plus and it should still give us okay it should still give us okay um but I just leave that plus there just this plus is the way how you can convert an integer into a number so when you find someone has written a plus before something like this one is converting this number into an integer and when you have converted it into an integer now you can use these uh, triple equal signs and these ones are very strict they compare this one strictly to this one they mean that they should have the same that type you can see here it is a number and even this one is a number okay so after we have found a product and you can see we have the product so right now you can see we have the product guys when i click on this one you can see this is a product one and this one is also to show you how we use the find method okay 
So those who have not know, know how to use a find method, this is how you can find a method. Uh, find an item. Okay? You can find the item like this. Okay, so that is cool. The second one, now what we want is after getting this item, then we want to add it to an array of cut. So we are going to create a cut array. And then from this cut array, we are going to push this item that we have gotten. Okay, so on top here, okay, on top here before the function, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to initialize, I'm just going to initialize the cut array, the cut array, okay, and this cut array, I'm just going to select cut is equal to an empty array, so that we initialize it with an empty array. So at this point here, where we have this product, I'm just going to go ahead and call this cut, cut dot push. So we are pushing this product. Okay. So cut dot push, and I'm pushing this product you have just created here. And after that, I can console dot log cut. Okay. So that you see that the item has been added to the cut. So if I just go down and I click on this one. You see now I have on line 27 a cut, and this cut is having one item that has been added to it. Okay, so that is good. Now, uh, the problem we have right now is that if I go ahead and I refresh, this cut actually disappears. And so we the first thing we have is to first display these cut items we have here. We can actually first display them okay so i'm just first going to select this cut number here this cut count so that when we add an item we can also change them here okay so um when we add an item to the cut i'm just going to go back here we have this link that is having the cut link and it is the one which is holding the cut count here so I'm just going to use this cut count ID. Uh, let me just go to up. And down here, I could just go ahead and select the cut count. Let me select it outside here. And actually I have it here. Const cut count is document.query selector. Hashtag cut count. So this one is helping us to get the cut count. Okay, so I can just come here and then I update it. Okay. So here, I can just say update, update the cut count, the cut uh, count. So if we update the cut count now, is going to be the cut count, okay, dot text content is equal to cut dot length. Cut dot what? Cut dot length. As simple as that. Okay, so now they just go ahead. So refresh, there are zero items. So when I just come and I add, add one item to the cut, you see there is an item in the cut. So that should change here the cut items in the cut. That is one. Let's add another one. Second one, third one. So you see the cut now has three items, and even on top here, it should have three items, which is good. Now, the problem we still having right now, if I refresh the page, all this gums uh, goes back to zero. Even uh, our items here, they are, so the array is empty. That's why you are seeing the cut items back to zero. So to solve this problem, what we are going to do is, what we are going to do to solve this problem is that we are going to, um, we are going to do what? We are going to save all our items that you have added to the cart. We want to save them in the local storage. Okay? So those who have not seen the local storage before, just click on here where we have the console on this double arrow here. When it brings out all these other items, the element source performance, network performance, and all these other ones. But the most important one we are uh, interested in is this application. So click on this application. And now, when you come to the application, you will see you have a lot of things. 
you have all storage and a lot of stuff cookies and all these ones but the one we are interested in is the one that says local storage and when you go under local storage you will see inside it there is this link which is actually our website here so just click on this one and now it's because i already have all this stuff i'm just going to simply delete this one and now it should just show you something clear like this it should not have anything in the cart okay or anything to do here it should just have a key here and a value and they are all both empty okay and if you have anything here simply click on this button which is clear all click on this one to clear everything okay now when that one is done okay when that one is done simply we can just minimize it or we can just leave it like that so what we want is how do we add items to a local storage okay so local storage um let me just put here so we can add items to the local storage so here add items to local storage okay so local storage uh has two things okay you can add items to a local storage and you can also get items from a local storage and that one gives it and you can even also delete items from a local storage so what we are going to do here is we are just going to call out the local storage method so there is a local storage in javascript and then on this you can call out some methods and you can see here you have all these methods you have the get item you have the set item remove item and you have also clear item so you have all these methods on your hands to use and the first one you're going to use is the set item so the set item method takes in two things okay the set item method it takes in the key as you have seen here it takes in the key and the value okay so the key is the one you're going to use to identify and the value is one which is going to go in that key Another thing to, to know to notice is that the value here must be a string, okay? So that means if we add our stuff here, before we add it, we must make it a string, okay? So inside here, I'm just going to save the key as cut. And what I want to put here, I could just put a cut, okay, like so. But if you look at the cut, um, I'm not going to run it yet. But if you remember, the cut is just simply an object. So to make it a string, we must wrap it around a method, string file, which is actually called uh, JSON. So that method is on the JSON dot string file. Then we add the cut. Now this method here, if I just come and I run it here so that you can see what it makes, just comes here and just simply say console.log uh, string by the cut it will convert it uh, this item inside the it the object inside the cut will be now string file so yes let just demonstrate this and i'm just going to come down here and i add the item to the cut and you can see there is something that has entered into the cut if you look at it i can also click it and then you can see here that everything has been string fight. So if I add another one like that, so now there are two. And now let's just go to the console so that you can see very well what has happened. So click back here and go back to the console. Uh, actually, that method is on JSON. Sorry, guys. It is JSON dot string file. So it is a JSON method. So I just go back and let me just add uh, some other items down here. Add this one. And now if you check it, it, uh, it has been stringified. If you look at this, the ID is in double quotes and everything is in double quotes. And that's what you mean uh, by string file. It makes uh, the object to be in a string format. Okay, so after we have added the item in the cut, so you can see now, in the application if we go back here we have a number of items in the cart okay we have a number of items in the cart here 
you can see we have this one of id 8 now the one thing if we go back up here we have one item in the cart now but if i refresh you said this item disappears but the one that is in the cart actually remains okay the one you have added in the cart does not go away it remains and this is an advantage because now instead of fetching the items we can be getting them from uh, these uh, the one that have been stored in the car in the local storage okay so how do we get back this cut from the local storage okay so now let's uh, come back on top here where we have the cut here now you can see we initialize the cut to be an empty array but uh, not in all cases because like in this case we already added some item and for some reason when you refresh your page or maybe you are just on the website and the power goes and you again go back to the website I don't want to lose my items that were in the cart okay so now to make sure that we have all the items that we have in the cart what we can do is here we can just actually ask a condition okay first of all we are going to first say const stored so we can first check if we have any stored cut items okay so we can first get these stored cut items from the local storage so stored items from the local storage is going to be local storage dot now we use the second method which is get item now this method simply takes in the key okay which is uh in this case is the cut now this key we are passing in is actually the same key we defined down here this one that is the same key we are, we are using okay so now on top we are trying to get the stored uh, cut items and now after getting these ones actually the problem is that the cut we stored it in this string format now when we get back this one we don't want it in a string format we want it in a json object so to turn it back into a json object we have to run uh, something on these cut items so we can just simply convert them back to uh, an object by using the second method which is pass so this json.pass it gets the an object it removes it from the string format and it puts it back in the javascript object format so simply put this one back so we say json.pass and then we pass in the local storage dot get item card okay so you could just come back here and let's console.log i could just first show you what these stored at uh, stored items look like just like so if we go back to the console here and you can see we have one item coming from up js on line 8 which is actually this and it's showing us one item in the cart that actually that is in the local storage okay the result is great so now how do we write a condition to first check if there are items in the stored cart items then we actually put them in the cart or if there is nothing here then we show uh, the empty array so what we can just do uh, here we can write a condition by saying uh, first check if stored cut items are present and we can use that one by putting a question mark and this is what you call a ternary operator so this one is checking if stored items is true or if they are there if this is true then simply get this cut and save it into um, not that into stored stored cut items okay so this one I'm just checking if stored cut items are present, then store this cut into stored cut items. And if it is false, we use these ones, then get save it as an empty array. So these cut items, it, this one, this condition will always be checking. If there are stored items, if they are there, then get this cut, save it as stored cut items. And if they are not, then just simply make an add cut 
as uh, as an empty array and this one will always be happening when the app starts so right now if i go back and refresh the page i hope we don't have anything now we have one okay uh we have one yeah okay so now um but then uh we have to update these cut items here because already we have one item into the cut if we just go back now and you simply consider to log the cut so if you say console.log cut, then the cut should have some item. Okay? If I go back here inside the console, you see that the cut on line 10 has one item. But this item is not reflected here in the HTML. Like here on the UI is not reflected. So to do that, we have also to update the cut count. So just say cut count dot text content is equal to cut dot length uh, is equal to cut dot dot length as simple as that so now if we go back it should now show one okay that is great now it is showing one because this item now is coming from the local storage okay so now to see this very well in action uh let me add more products so just like add that one add this one scroll down uh let's add another one and now just to check we have four items in the cut now the good thing if we refresh the page they should not disappear you see that we can refresh the page they are not disappearing because right now we are actually fetching them from the local storage. Now that is great. But one thing that is remaining is actually when we click on add to cart, we actually want to find or want to show a notification that a product has been added to cart. Okay. So to do that, um, to do that in our index, we are going to add the second a notification so i'm having this uh div if you can see it here i'm seeing this div which says it is a note you see that this one this div a note and you see the message will be here so this one is going to be our notification you can go ahead and copy this class and check it in styles this note class and you can see it has also position absolute it has margin and it also have left of negative 300 let me just put back to something like 10 pixels so that you see it if i add something like 10 pixels you can see the message is here so the notification will be coming here the message will be here so once say if i click on add to cut then this message should display on top here saying uh, this one added to cut the product has been added to cut so i'm just going to put back this negative 300 so that it is hidden by default so how do we bring it back so where we have here the where we have here the uh where um let's just go back to our app so on this app here down okay uh, after adding to local storage so here after adding to the local storage we can just go back and here down we can now show a notification so show notification okay so we can create a function for showing the notification and then we'll come and run it on this point okay so instead of console.log i'm just going to say show notification so notification okay i'm trying to run this function but then this this function is not there and this function i want it to take a message and the message will be like product 
added to cart product added added to cart uh, added to cart okay uh, product added to cart and you have even access to a product so you would even go ahead and say uh, for instance you say uh, the name of the product because you have the product access to the product I would want to see people how they be creative with that so you have the product itself you can extract like the name from this product and you say this product ABC has been added to cut okay but yes right now I just keep it simple I'm just going to keep the message uh, to product added to cut okay so now let me just go and create this function show notification so come down here you can just go right all the way down and you can say function show notification and then it takes in a message okay and then down here we're just going to say what do we want to do we want to get this note okay we want to get this note here this note uh, after getting this note, we want to change its text content to be the message. So that is the first thing. I'm just going to select the note. So come here and select the note. Okay. Const uh, note is equal to document dot query selector. And then here we're using this uh, note. So this one will give access to the note and now what we want is get the note dot text content is equal to the message okay so that is the first thing we want to do and then secondly we want to bring the note from where it is hidden okay remember by default this note is not being seen is hidden at negative 300 if you remember very well in css this node is at left negative 300 pixels so what we want if someone clicks on add to cut we bring this left back to 10 pixels okay so change this one i'm just going to copy like this so what we want to change is we want to change this left so just say not dot style okay then dot left is equal to so we want to bring it back to 10 pixels like so so let's see if this is working so i'm just going to add an item so click any item right now uh, and we did not see if it came yeah product added to cut now the problem is this remains there it's supposed to come so product added to cut and then after that then and by the way, we should also give it actually here. I think it's good we give it position fixed instead. Okay. And then I think it's going to complain about the widget, but we can just give it position fixed. So that actually when we scroll, it is actually there. Okay, that is great. So now, um, and actually even the cut, but let us just leave the only that one. Then now what we want is if I add to cut, it should disappear. So how do we make that one? So go back to the app here. Uh, go back to the app here. And down here, we are going to write a set timeout function. Set timeout. So this function takes in two things. It takes in a function and when it should be executed, maybe after 30 seconds. And the time here is in milliseconds, and 1000 milliseconds is equal to one second. So I'm just going to simply uh, create this function. As I've said, set timeout function takes in two things. It takes in a callback function that should run after a specific period of time. And we can specify the time here. And we want this function to run after three seconds. So after three seconds, what you want is you want to hide back this node. Okay? want this node to hide after 30 seconds when it has shown so i'm just going to write this function okay just simply write this function i'm just going to make it an arrow function 
and the method you just want to get is just get the node dot left actually dot style then dot left and then simply set it to negative 300 pixels so we want to set it back to negative 300 pixels so that it can hide okay so now let's see how practical it can be so go come here add to cut it comes product added to cut three seconds later it goes away uh let's just do another item like this one product added to cut and then it goes away and by the way even these cut items i think it would be better if we added um we gave them to be fixed uh can i find cut link Control f cut link let me pass this one and i said let me also make this one fixed okay so so that we can actually be seeing them as we're scrolling down the page we can actually see how the items are being added so just click another one eight product added to cut okay so right now we are having all our thing working very well we have the notification we have the cut items showing even after i refresh the page the eight items actually remain this is really amazing thank you so much for watching subscribe to our youtube channel so in the next episode i'm just going to put i want us to click on these cut items and we fetch all these items we put them into the cut and then we can also start deleting uh the item so in the next episode we are going to see how we can add uh we can look through all these items on the cut page and then we also add the delete functionality on the cut thank you so much see you in the next episode